This is the United States of America, home to iconic buildings like the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, Willis Tower, or as I will forever say, Sears Tower, and many more. But why is it always the tallest buildings that get all the attention? What about the largest buildings? The largest by volume, or the largest by square foot? What about those buildings? How come they get no attention? Well, today we're gonna flip the tides and talk about the largest buildings in the United States by usable volume. And to show your support for these largest buildings, make sure you click that like button, subscribe, and comment below. Let's begin. Number seven is Hangar One in Mountain View, California at the Moffett Airfield. Today, when driving along the 101, there's this skeletal structure off in the distance. That is Hangar 1. Upon closer inspection, it would definitely leave one wondering what exactly it is. It was actually built in the 1930s as a naval airship hangar. Construction was of steel girders and galvanized steel, upon a reinforced pad anchored to concrete pilings. Upon completion, it was 1,133 feet long and 308 feet wide. At each end, there was these things called orange peel doors, and they weighed almost 200 tons each, and were moved on their own by 150 horsepower motors operated via an electric control panel. This allowed for airships to get in and out. After airships were considered no longer a viable source of transportation, the hangar was left to its lonesome until 2003 when it was discovered it was leaking toxic chemicals, specifically lead paint, from its paneling. So, the paneling was removed and paid for by top Google executives, who agreed to pay the cost at revamping the hangar and being able to use two-thirds of the floor space upon completion for eight of their private jets. In 2014, Google then paid $1.16 billion for a 60-year lease of the hangar, and then in 2016 announced that they would begin restoring the hangar and hoping to have it complete by 2025, meaning that once again, it would have walls, and maybe someday be used for its original purpose again, as a hangar, but I guess this time for airplanes. In the number six spot, we head to 2800 Polar Way in Richland, Washington. It is officially the world's largest freezer slash refrigerated warehouse, and it's also automated, and is owned by a company by the name of Lineage Logistics, a company with a focus on refrigerated warehouses. The facility has an area of 505,000 square feet and an interior volume of over 36 million cubic feet. The building is capable of holding 350 million pounds of frozen food. The facility also has its own branch rail line, where it's able to handle 50 train cars every day. Inside, over 65% of the facility is automated. There are automated cranes, as well as an automated monorail system which gets goods to the right truck to send out. Another portion is done by human control. The building originally broke ground on May 12, 2014, and opened in July 2015. But not long after, in 2019, there were plans to expand the facility again. It will add almost 16 million cubic feet of storage for the building. And even crazier, they still have a lot of land if they choose to expand again. Number 5 is Austell USA's Module Manufacturing Facility in Mobile, Alabama. Hostel USA is located on Blakely Island, and they make some of the biggest, largest, most secretive ships for the U.S. Navy. And when you're working on projects like this, you need a large space. So their facilities are massive. Look at how big the warehouse is compared to every other building in the city. It is inside this module manufacturing facility warehouse that all the materials are delivered, such as aluminum. The materials are then cut, formed, and crafted to create the baselines of a ship. Once everything's completed in that facility, it's then moved over to these four assembly bays along the Mobile River, where they are finalized and turned into ships. In total, the facilities employ about 4,000 people, and are by far one of the biggest employers in Mobile. The interior volume of the modular manufacturing facility is 48 million cubic feet, making it the fifth largest building in the United States. As you sit in your car waiting for that horrible traffic light at the corner of Georgia Highway 21 and International Trade Parkway just outside of Savannah, you might not realize to your right that in those trees is one of the biggest buildings in the United States. It is the Target Import Warehouse. The building is over 2 million square feet and handles overseas cargo and merchandise 
for the retailer's southern stores. Meaning if you live in the south and go to Target, this is where your stuff's coming from. It takes just looking at a satellite image to see how massive this building is. It even dwarfs the other distribution centers around it. It isn't hard to tell which one belongs to Target. The building was built in 2007 and is strategically located next to the Port of Savannah, which is home to the largest container terminal in the United States. George's governor at the time cut the ribbon to the opening of this building and touted the amount of jobs it would create. Though you'd think for a building of its size, it'd be able to employ more than 150 people. There isn't a whole lot of information on this building or its interior, but one can assume a lot of it is automated. Because who's gonna write an article on warehouses, let alone make a video on it? The largest buildings in the United States by usable volume. Oh. I would also say that it's probably safe to say, with all these warehouses and distribution centers in this small area, it's about time they upgrade that intersection. Number three is really out of this world. We fly on over to the NASA Assembly Building at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The NASA Vehicle Assembly Building, or VAB, VAB, is the facility where they build rockets, space shuttles, all the stuff that goes into outer space. The Vehicle Assembly Building was completed in 1966 as an answer for NASA needing a place to build their rockets. The building is 525 feet tall and 518 feet wide. There are four separate high bays located inside the building, with each having a 456 foot high door to enable rockets to be stacked vertically then rolled out onto the launch pad. Those bay doors also were the largest in the world. Speaking of largest things in the world, the American flag painted on the side of the building is also the largest American flag in the world and stands at 209 feet tall and 110 feet wide. It's painted on the building, so it's not an actual flag flag, as in a flag, but you get the idea. Due to the building's coastal location on Florida's coast, the building was constructed to withstand hurricanes and tropical storms. Though, despite this, the building has received damage from the several hurricanes that pound it every year. Thankfully, they get the repairs done right away. And that about does it for our third largest building in the United States by interior volume. Certainly unique. It's not every day you get a NASA building that builds space rockets on your list. Let's check out what number two is, because somehow, there's buildings bigger than this. We go from one end of the country to the other to the state of Washington, to Boeing's Composite Wing Center at number two. Located in the city of Everett, this facility is considered the most advanced composite facility in the world, costing roughly one billion dollars upon completion in 2017. From the outside, it looks just like a big box, but remember what they say, you can't judge a book by its cover, because inside it's quite the technological marvel. The facility manufactures the world's largest composite wings, used for the 777X. The composite wing center is more than 27 acres under one roof. That's equivalent to 25 football fields. Construction of the composite wing center took approximately 4.2 million man-hours, and at its peak had 1,700 employees working on the project. It was the biggest new building by interior volume built in the entire United States for the year 2017. The building also contains three of the world's largest autoclaves, which are big enough to hold two 737 fuselages inside. These autoclaves are essentially giant pressure cookers, and it cures the composite materials also made in this facility that then go on as the wings of the 777X. Boeing themselves provided an interesting statistic about their autoclaves, saying that one of these autoclaves could bake. 100,000 pizzas at one time. That means the entire city of Everett could pretty much be fed with one baking. I don't know about you, but I think it's time for a citywide pizza party. Each one of these autoclaves is over 1 million pounds. The door itself is 55 tons. So when you're literally building wings of an airplane and doing multiple at a time, you're going to need a big building. Which is why the Boeing Composite Wing Center is number two for the largest buildings in the United States by their interior volume. I mean, you can stick 25 football fields in here. That is insane. 
Before we continue, you might be wondering why this is only a top 7 list, because after about 7th place, there are way too many buildings for us to comb through to determine who is actually in the top 10 and who isn't. It just became too big a project. I mean, the United States is a big country, we can't possibly go through every single town and look for giant buildings, right? We tried, so that's why we have the top 7. I'm gonna give you a moment here to think. What do you think is the largest building in the United States by interior volume? Is it something like the Mall of America, the Pentagon, maybe a car manufacturing plant? So go ahead and give it your best guess. I'll give you one second. Time's up. Time for number one. So for number one, we don't have to go far. We're back in Everett, Washington, and here's the Composite Wing Center. We just kind of hop over here to the Boeing Everett factory. This not only is the largest building in the United States, but it is the largest building in the world. It has continued to grow over the years, but is currently now an enclosed space of 472 million cubic feet. That's over 98 acres. Boeing's Everett factory is located within Payne Field, an airfield used by the US military during World War II as well as the perfect place for Boeing to test out its airplanes. Painfield is renowned by aviation buffs all around the world. And for good reason, because it's pretty much a little playground for aviation fans. There are several aviation museums located around Painfield. Some tied to Boeing, some not, as well as restoration areas where they restore historic airplanes. Not to mention several locations purpose-built for aviation fans to take photos of their favorite airplanes. So how does the largest building in the world operate? Let's go on a little tour. It all starts at this small little unique port run by the Port of Everett for Boeing. The components from this pier then go up this steep grade known as Japanese Gulch. BNSF is on contract and runs a few locomotives back and forth between the port and the Everett Boeing factory. Once the components make it up the steep grade, they're unloaded into the factory. And then from there, a multitude of planes are built, including the original, the 747, then the 767, the 777, the 787, and more. It can take a long time to get from one place to the other inside this massive building. Inside the building, they have roughly 1,300 bicycles for employees to use to get from one end to the other. There are also scooters and golf carts to get around. There are over 37,000 employees who work inside this building. I think it's pretty hard to grasp, unless you see it in person, just how massive this building is. There are multiple lines simultaneously building airplanes. Alongside these lines are offices and other facilities, and it goes eight stories tall. There are eight-story buildings within this building. Another fun fact is that there are over one million overhead lights within the facility. There are also 39 miles of ceiling tracks for the overhead cranes, which there are 26 of inside of the building. So once we're done with the plane, we have to take the plane out of the building, which is why the facility has 12 separate doors. All are 82 feet high and range between 300 feet wide to 350 feet wide. Once those big doors are open and the plane rolls out, which the door takes about five minutes to open, they wheel it across this bridge. From there, the plane is finalized and detailed and given the right livery over at these buildings. The Boeing Everett factory originally was built in 1967 and has since grown through the years. I will try to put its size in perspective one more time. The building itself is so large that it could contain all of Disneyland and still have room to spare. With the annual tours and the several events and museums around the airport, it's pretty easy to see why this is a playground for aviation enthusiasts. It's even easy to get there because there's an airport terminal right there. And did I mention that Painfield is ranked in the top 10 as one of the best small airports in the United States? So now you have no reason not to visit the largest building in the United States and the world by interior volume, the Boeing Everett Factory. And there you have it, the seven largest buildings in the United States by usable volume. And it's quite amazing how varied they were, from giant blimp hangers to ship manufacturing, to a place where they build space rockets, then onto a factory where dreams take flight, even down to the humble warehouse that keeps our food from spoiling. These are the largest buildings in the USA, and they might not be the most glamorous, but they're the buildings that keep America running. Lastly, if you've made it this far and you still haven't liked or subscribed to our channel, well do it! You'd be helping out just like these large buildings do, and it'd be very much appreciated. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. See you next time.